February 10th, 2009, two satellites, Iridium and Cosmos, collide in a hypervelocity impact that obliterate both spacecraft, instantly producing over 2,000 fragments of debris. Today, more than 500 collisions in space have occurred, and the U.S. Department of Defense tracks around 22,000 fragments currently orbiting our planet. But hold on, we're missing something. Come take a look inside of my telescope, and I'll show you. There are millions of fragments that are too small for radar to detect, and they pose a bigger threat than all the large objects, because we can't see them coming. And the amount of debris is only growing. 90% of it is man-made. And it's usually composed of inactive spacecraft, used rocket fuel, or nuts and bolts. Debris can range from the size of a grain of sand to a school bus, and it doesn't just sit there. It zips around the planet so fast that an object the size of an apple has the same force of 25 sticks of dynamite. With enough time, any two orbiting objects will either collide or burn up in the atmosphere. But if the objects collide, then they'll create a cloud of debris upon impact. Thankfully, Earth has a cleanup crew. But it's kind of a drag, to be honest. An atmospheric drag? Let me show you how it works. As debris orbits, it frequently collides with air molecules, which in return push back a little bit, causing the velocity to slowly decrease until it eventually burns up on re-entry. Even the sun contributes a bit. Every 11 years, it goes from its solar maximum, where the Earth's atmosphere is heated up, to its solar minimum, where the atmosphere cools down. When the atmosphere is hotter, there's more friction, which means more drag. You can feel this effect yourself if you ever try running against the wind. You have to work harder to push through all the air molecules, and that slows you down. Well, some debris can remain in orbit for tens, thousands, or even millions of years, because the higher the altitude debris orbits at, the less air molecules there are to slow it down. And this just causes more problems. In 1978, Donald Kessler predicted that if a fragment collides with a large enough object, the resulting fragments could then collide with other objects, producing even more fragments. The more debris in orbit there is, the higher the risk of a collision. And ultimately, collision fragments will collide with other collision fragments, causing the likelihood that another collision will occur to increase. This problem is what's known as the Kessler Syndrome, or self-sustaining cascading collisions, and it's a really big deal, because even if we don't launch any more rockets in space, the amount of debris will still continue to increase at a faster rate than it can be removed by atmospheric drag. Imagine trying to take water out of a sinking ship with only your bare hands. After a certain point, the water flows into the boat at a faster rate than your hands can remove it, causing you to sink. And it works the same way in space. One by one, satellites will be knocked out like dominoes until eventually, they are all destroyed. But the future doesn't have to be all bad. Today, there are many new technologies to help deal with space debris, such as giant magnets, harpoons, nets, and even lasers. And you could help too, by inventing an even better way to make space a safer and cleaner playground for future generations. My name is Avi Schiffman, and I hope you learn something new.